Yo, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy, King Sanders here, and we are back with another day of sports betting. This is going to be for Sunday, April 17th slate of NBA and MLB games. I'm super excited to hop into it. We have a pretty good slate of both games. Obviously, we are in day two of the um, first round of the NBA playoffs. We had a great day yesterday, and like I said, we have a ton of baseball games on today, too, so we are going to just be full of sports from literally from noon until all the way through the night. I'm super excited about it. Um, but first, let's go ahead and um, go over a few housekeeping things. First things first, we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers. So if you guys are new, make sure you guys do like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, next, I did just want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to all of our members here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do, and thank you guys so much for giving such a small channel such a big chance, as I always say. Truly, you, you guys have no idea how much it means to me. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, Let's do a quick recap, but first, hold on. A few moments later. And boom, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we finally have brought out the shades for the first time in April. April has been a terrible month here to us, um, but we finally got a clean sweep yesterday. I'm, so, I'm super excited about it. It truly hasn't happened very often, um, especially not here recently, but... Like I said, it happened today, so I'm super excited about it. We, we had some really great picks. Um, some of them were not super popular. Some of them were, but regardless, let's go ahead and do a quick recap. So we had Fred Van Fleet under four and a half rebounds versus Philadelphia. He ends up with just one rebound, so that was a great call overall. Um, the only thing is, he did end up getting fouled out of the game. I think it was like the middle of the fourth. But regardless, I think Max he would have finished with was two. But you never really know. Um, but I do think that him getting fouled out definitely helped us for sure. And then we had Jalen Brunson over 20 and a half points versus Utah. Him and Spencer Dinwiddie were really the only ones scoring on that team. So we may be looking at a Spencer Dinwiddie prop, uh, you know, on the next game. Just, just a little, just a little teaser, but. Uh, Jalen Brunson had a pretty good game. Um, he was one of the only scorers for Utah that really could get anything done. Then we had D'Angelo Russell over seven and a half assists. I'm so glad. I was looking at his points for so long. I'm very, very glad that I didn't take it. D'Lo, I'm not even going to lie to you guys, played awful. Um, but luckily, he did end up hitting the over and assist for us. So that was all that really mattered. I was thinking about PRAs. I was thinking about points because he has been on an absolute tear. But I, I'm really glad I... Kind of faded off of that and just went with the assists. Then we had Yankees and Orioles under nine. And despite the Yankees scoring, like, I think it was four runs in either the fourth or the fifth inning, they were able to get it done for us. And then we had also our experiment. We had Arizona plus one and a half. They ended up winning outright. So that's pretty crazy. We had a we had a really good day, technically 4-0 and oh on our official plays, but with the experiment 5-0. and oh. So that, that's a crazy day. But let's go ahead and dive into today's plays. Our first play of the day, we're going to be taking Trey Young. We're going to be taking his under three and a half rebounds here versus Miami at plus 110 odds. Now, Trey Young, in four of his last five games, he has gone under this line. So he hasn't been trying for those rebounds very much. And it truly does make sense. I mean, Trey Young is going to be the main scorer here for this team. He's going to be shooting a bunch. He's going to be dishing the ball off when he needs to. He's not going to be looking for those rebounds. He really has no reason to be looking for them. So um, he has gone under in four of his last five games, and he's gone under in five straight versus Miami, which you know is a pretty good track record for this bet. And Miami on the year and in their last seven games, regardless, they allow the fewest rebounds per game to opposing point guards. So they do not allow a lot of point guard or a lot of rebounds to that point guard position. And Miami in their last three games, they've allowed the um or actually just over overall, sorry. Overall for the year they've allowed the third fewest rebounds per game to the two opposing teams. So they just haven't given up a ton of rebounds and almost none of them to the opposing point guards. So I really love this spot here. Miami also 26th in pace, and Atlanta is 21st. So both these teams play at a super slow pace. Shouldn't be a whole t like a whole lot of shots going up, and a, a, not a lot of rebounds for this team, and not a lot of rebounds to the starting point guards. So I think that this is I think this is a really good spot here for Trey Young at plus value. I don't think it should be plus value. So we're gonna be riding with it. Trey Young under three and a half rebounds here versus Miami at plus 110 odds. Our next play of the day, we're gonna be taking a Brooklyn net. But it's probably not going to be the Brooklyn net that you expect. We're going to be taking Bruce Brown. We're going to be taking his over 13 and a half points here versus Boston at minus 115 odds. Now, Bruce Brown, in all honesty, has been going 
off lately. I know it hasn't been, you know, on Sports Center. It hasn't been on any sports networks, nothing like that. But he's actually covered this exact line in six of his last seven games, including a couple 20 pieces. He's been having a really good end of the season. And versus Boston, he's actually covered this exact line in three of his last four. So he's he's actually just been a very solid player um, that's kind of went under the radar. And in his last three game or in the last three games, Boston is the seventh fastest team in pace, which is a lot faster than what they are over the course of the entire year. So they've been playing at a much faster pace here recently, which may give more possessions and shots to a guy like Bruce Brown. And in, in the last seven games, Boston, they actually allowed the 14th most points per game to opposing small forwards. So nothing too crazy, but I think that this one is going to be a pretty big exception. And the reason being is just because of the matchups. Now, if you think about it, obviously KD is the best player on the Brooklyn Nets. So they're probably going to put either Tatum or Brown on KD. Now, the second best player on that team is Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is going to be matched up on Marcus Smart, I would assume, or potentially maybe a little bit of uh, Jalen Brown. And whoever's not guarding Kyrie is more than likely going to be guarding Seth Curry, which leaves you know Bruce Brown as that like fourth option. So I think he is going to be going under the radar. I don't think they're going to be expecting him to have a big night so that's going to be our second play of the day we're going to be taking bruce brown over 13 and a half points versus boston at minus 115 odds now our third play of the day we're going to be taking the bucks we're going to be taking the bucks minus three and a half here in the first quarter versus my chicago bulls at minus 110 odds now the bucks they are 42 33 and one against the spread in the first quarter which is the sixth best um, against the spread record in the entire nba And the Bulls, on the flip side of things, they are 33 and 44 against the spread in the first quarter, and they, which leads to the fifth worst against the spread record in the entire NBA. And the Bucks at home this year, their first quarter spread is 22 and 16 against the spread, so which is also the fifth best in the entire NBA. And the Bulls um, on the road is 17 and 23 against the spread in the first quarter, which is the tenth worst in the entire NBA, which. All of this does pain me coming from a Bulls fan, but it's it's just the stats. I'm going for wins, and I think this is a great spot for it. And this year, the these two teams have matched up four times, and the Bucks have covered in three of them. So I think we see a ton of value there. So we're going to be taking it. Bucks minus three and a half in the first quarter versus the Chicago Bulls at minus 110 odds. Now, our fourth and final play of the day, which is going to be an MLB plays, we're going to be taking the Tigers. We're going to be taking the money line here versus the Royals at plus 105 odds. Now, Tyler Alexander, he does have a 4.15 ERA, which, you know, is pretty average. It's it's nothing too crazy, but 4.15 ERA. Now, on the flip side of things, Carlos Hernandez is going to be on the mound here for the Royals. He does have a 4.04 ERA in his career, so these two pitchers are going to be very close to one another. But Carlos Hernandez earlier this year, in his one other start that he did have, he did have an 8.31 ERA, so he did struggle a little bit. And the Tigers, um, they are up in this series. They are up 2-1, to one. so they have won two of their last three games here versus the Royals. And if you go back a little bit farther historically, the Tigers have won in three of their last five games here versus the Royals. And the Royals on the year haven't really started out great, um, but neither have the Tigers. So it's going to be very, very close. Um, but the Royals, they've started out this year 3-5, and five, and the Tigers, they've started out 4-5. and five. So it's not like it's really that much better, but I think it's going to be a close game. So we're going to be taking the underdog here we're gonna, with a little bit of plus money. So we're going to be taking the Tigers money line here versus the Royals at plus 105 odds. Now, we're going with our public fade of the day. We are going to be taking the Orioles plus one and a half here versus the Yankees at plus 100 odds. Now, if you look at it, um, there's only 743 bets on it as of right now, but it is the most bet on MLB game at the time recording this video um, for tomorrow or for, I guess, today whenever you guys are watching this. But 743 bets, and 70% of them are on the Yankees. So I really like our odds here. We're, that's going to be our public fade. And not to mention, Baltimore is 3-2 and two against the spread in their last five. So they haven't been completely awful. Um, they haven't been good, but they haven't been awful. So maybe this is one that they can steal here. So we're going to be taking it. Orioles plus 1.5 versus Yankees at plus 100 odds. So that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, 
Like I said, we're on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so make sure that you guys are subbed. It does help me out a ton. Uh, but that's going to do it for me. This is King Sanders signing out. Peace.